G'day legends. Today you found us way east of Esperance. Super remote, isolated, rugged, hard to get to, and there's definitely no phone reception out here. It's just the way we like it. I've been dreaming of coming down here for years uh, to do exactly what we're doing on this trip. To tell you the story of John Anderson, also known as Black Jack Adder, and he was Australia's only known recorded pirate. And he lived just off here on the Recherche Archipelago for about 10 years in 1830s. And that story fascinates me. It has for so many years. And so I want to get out there and I want to camp on one of these islands. And uh, Windsor's coming down with me. We're going to try and fish and we're going to try and get the boat out there and find a, find an island that's reasonably safe to get onto and, uh, and set up camp for the night. So we're camped out here, um, basically just going through all my gear right now, working out what I'm going to need out on the islands, uh, what can be thrown at us, uh, you know, you gotta think of everything out there. It is quite easily, uh, you know, some of the most rugged coastline in Australia. Uh, and so we need to be prepared for that. We've got our safety devices, uh, extra food, extra water. Um, got through here, got my tents. Got some um, freeze dried food, got my jet boil gas. Um, all the camping gear. Gonna load up the spear gun and the Gigi just in case of stuff inshore if we find any little rock pools. Got the water jerrys. Um, but to be honest, food I'm not too worried about. Uh, if something was to go wrong, we could definitely catch fish and survive for quite a while. And I know there's rain coming tomorrow night, so God forbid something does go wrong, uh, we're gonna be able to collect rainwater. Well, the Recherche Archipelago is really not something you wanna mess with and take lightly. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that have spent years and years on the water. Um, and you know, even they will tell you that it's, um, it's some pretty treacherous water at times. Uh, so for us, for our first time, kind of ducking and weaving in between all the islands, trying to find uh, the islands we wanna camp on, uh, we just need to be careful, be smart about it. And um, I think between the three of us, we're all very, quite experienced when it comes to the ocean uh, and, um, and weather. So, you know, Windog spends a lot of time um, in the boat, knows, the, uh, knows his maps and everything very well. Guido's very aware of, um, of ocean and how dangerous it can be and the cliff lines once we're on the island. And I'm a, kind of a bit of a mix of, of both. So let's hope all goes well and um smooth sailing i think weather the weather window's closed up on us though we've only got a night one night out there unfortunately but we're going to make the most of it and um and i'm sure we'll be back How's that ramp, mate? Oh, not the worst I've done, but it's a bit weedy. Um, nice gradual slope and hard sand underneath though makes it a bit easier. That was old, mate. Yeah, he was good. His, his mum wasn't. His <laughs> mum was like, I don't think he's done this before. I was like, piss him off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has either. <laughs> well, I was going down the wrong line first. I, was, I had lined everything up wrong. And then I was like, shit, hang on a minute, that's not where I'm supposed to be going. Yeah. And Chet, that's when she was like, I don't think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and he's and the dad and he's like, shut up, mum. He up. knows what he's doing. Shut Just up. shut up. Shut up, mum. <laughs> Let the boys do it. Yeah. There's a ripper day on the water. Might be a bit choppy once we get around the um the headland though. But I think we're all sorted. We've got enough gear to last us two years out there. Yeah, fuck, we've got no shortage of gear. Sideways wind. 
we're on the bloody Atlantic. <laughs> First challenge was uh, obviously getting down that boat ramp, getting old mate to clear it. Um, as you can see, amazing, amazing weather down here. Good old Aspen's turning it on. Um, <laughs> we, did, we just thought we'd um, kind of cut through the islands, take shelter um, from the islands on our way east. And uh, we basically, Windsor just did one quick drop. Got a fish already. Um, so that's my dinner, and these guys just got to sort out theirs. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we're going to keep motoring on and see where we can get to. I feel fine, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could go any second. I think this wave just might do it. Oh, <laughs> I'm talking about it too much. <laughs> Legends, the uh, sun has finally come out. The wind's dropped off. It's like the weather we were hoping for, but uh, later than what we were hoping for. Um, but just in time for our uh, little island adventure, we're going to flat little bit of land over here um, basically middle middle of the ocean there's nothing else out here and uh, that's our intended camp for the night tiny little beaches on it but we still have to suss it out to see if it's going to be actually doable uh, the boys have got plenty of fish so <laughs> we won't go hungry <laughs> we won't go hungry we got two fishermen on board and um, and me so this is our beautiful little island and it looks like we're not going to be able to um, anchor the boat. No good. Uh, there's a little patch of reef we thought we'd be able to skim over, but it's just kind of gone dry on a few little waves. So I'm not sure what to do. We've got to look for next option. So we're committing. That sounds good. Yeah. The more the merrier. Doing, doing this little spot here. Um, now we just have to swim all our stuff in though, so got to be pretty picky as to what we're taking in. All right. Kiddo's going in first. All right. And he's I'm almost lost his bodyboard board already. Chuck it in neutral. Oh, I'm in neutral. Oh, bitch. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <Lost the remote. laughs> you all right? <laughs> Go, son. And this is how we're going to have to get all our gear. Do what I do, eh? Yeah, yeah. We'll um, we'll learn from your mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. That's working well, though. See you in a minute. Oh, the water's actually really nice. Bit of work to get on it, but it's gonna be worth it. So Windsor's just offered me a carton of beers to <laughs> paddle his stuff in. Guess I'll do it. Um, this is kind of like being shipwrecked, but by choice. 
Yeah. You gotta paddle all the shit in you can. Except for you still have a working boat afterwards. We hope. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Got it on the island. Got the boat anchored out there. We've set up the tents. Uh, Giddo's filleting a fish that we caught from today. Um, it's so epic. I've always wanted to stay on an island down here. Just super remote, rugged. You know, we had to swim everything in. Um, there's just nothing around, not a trace of people. Um, it's, yeah, it's really, be really beautiful. And you know, people that, you know, shipwreck kind of days and, you know, people that were living on Middle Island, the sealers back in the 1830s, um, uh, you know, live, would have lived so simply, it would have been fish, would have been kelp, would have been some little coastal foraging, uh, plus the occasional supplies when they did head into Albany, which I can't imagine would have been very often at all because it would have been such a long trip But you've got you know, you got your seaweed and stuff um, There's like Chinaman hats. There's abalone. There'd be craze. There'd be you know big um, big gropers and stuff cruising along these little headlands it's, Yeah, it's pretty epic. I'm just well, I'm just frothing out Coastal rosemary over there. Haven't seen too much else though. Uh, we'll take that, float it in from somewhere, grab that on the way back. Now I've got to find some dry wood. Uh, it's been raining. Ah, here we go. Now, driftwood, never been a big fan of in the fire, just because the um, I find the spent so much time in the ocean that it actually. Um, don't know I don't know what the chemical kind of response is but I feel like the salt water kind of takes away something from it and quite often it doesn't burn very well after that um, I don't know how much driftwood we're actually going to find but give it my best that with us. Something else that's washed up. Take that with us. Oh, you got some baby stone crop. I haven't tried the baby stuff. Mm. That's really good. Sweet. Ah, we got more. Driftwood down here. Toenails combined, mate. I'm good to let go, mate. Toenails are hectic. Hey. <laughs> so, Guido's been keeping himself very busy and making some amazing sashimi from today. What fish was this? Bonito. Bonito. Well, that's a big deal. We'll pretend it's tuna, but it pretty much tastes the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's tuna. <laughs> tuna sounds better. Mm. But being honest, it's just a banana. <laughs> Mate, still tastes so good. good. Still tastes damn good. I could do this island life for a little bit longer. Yeah. What Couple about we drain the fuel out of the boat and stay here, right? <laughs> yeah. Probably the ocean won't agree. And don't tell Windsor. Yeah. Windsor won't start. Just yeah, disconnect the fuel line. Oh, guess we're staying here. Yeah. Oh, how good. <laughs>
almost 200 years ago, this was literally the hunting ground for a bloke named John Anderson. He was a seal hunter, he was a leader of sorts, and he was a sailor. He was also known as Blackjack Adder, and he's Australia's only recorded, only known ever pirate. Right here on the Esperance Archipelago, or the Recherche Archipelago. Now I can't imagine after what we had yesterday on a, you know, pretty much a no swell, light wind kind of day, what they would have had in a small wooden boat cruising from island to island hunting seals in the 1830s. With no idea about what weather's coming in, uh, what winds are coming in, you know, and I'm sure there was many times where that's be stuck on these very, very remote, quite barren islands. So Blackjack and his crew uh, set up camp on Middle Island. They lived in the southeast corner of a place now known as Blackjack Bay. And from there, you've got a huge amount of limestone caves uh, that they could camp in and live in and stay out of the prevailing weather. Now at one point when Blackjack Adder was in Albany, he was accused of murder and he was also accused of theft from one of his crew that decided to leave the island and, uh, and move into Albany. So when he was in Albany selling fur seals, um, seal furs, sorry, he, they basically pounced on him, got him into court. So he managed to get away with it though. While he was in there, he said, let it be known that the research archipelago is under his rule, and so is Middle Island. So what Blackjack Adder and his mates would do is they'd flag down passing ships as they navigate their way through the archipelago. They'd come aboard, they'd threaten them at gunpoint and with violence, and they'd take what they need, take supplies, and then leave the boat. And they carried the boat could carry on out east out of here. People already knew of Blackjack Adder then. It was in the Perth Gazette. They were warning ships sailing past the archipelago on their way east to be very, very careful and basically not stop for, uh, to help anyone in this archipelago because more than likely it would be Blackjack Adder. The last anyone heard of Blackjack, and as so, so the story goes, is his crew eventually had enough of him, had enough of the way he ruled the roost and uh, cut his throat and buried him on the island. That apparently took 10 years to do. By the sounds of how he ruled the island, uh, I'm surprised it didn't happen earlier. Twenty to twelve in the stark and bare. Sunny outside, but the rain goes instead. And I'm getting shorter. Smile away and run off. Help the storm pull my. Pulling out in air, 
But that's not, that's not living So here we are legends. This is what is now known as Blackjack's Cove. This is where John Anderson, Blackjack Adder, lived for almost a, a whole decade. And this is where they base themselves. Um, look, there's plenty of cliffs, uh, plenty of uh, limestone caves in the cliffs. But I think the only one that I would actually stay in looking at these would be this low lying one over here, which you'll see in the drone footage. Um, it is such an incredible bay. Uh, there's no swell getting in here, no wind getting in here. So you're protected from the offshores, uh, easterly, like northeasterly winds, and you're also protected from the southwesterly prevailing winds. So the turquoise water, um, it's, it's literally a paradise. I can see why they set up camp here for so long. Um, and yeah, so this is where it all happened. This is where they'd sail out of and flag down passing ships, uh, basically rob them and, um, and take what they needed to survive out here so they didn't have to go back to Albany every time and get their provisions. Um, all these ships that would have passed here on their way over east wouldn't then turn around back to Albany and go, hey, we've been robbed by someone in this cove. It would have literally just been, all right, well, that happened, we've got to keep on going. So they would have got away with it for so long before any news got back to WA. What a spot to do it. I definitely won't go swimming in here since this is where they used to bring their seals and basically cut the furs, furs off them. Uh, it's all a little bit too perfect to go swimming. But yeah, what a magic spot. I'm so glad we've made it here. Windsor and I have tried to get here for so long and, um, and it's happened, so. Yeah, it's pretty magic. All that we do, do. I'm giving no time Giving Oh, you better Keep on <laughs> Alright, sweet The wave coming in, I'll wait for that Alright, I'm going to go have a look Just put the ladder down if you can. Yeah. Ooh, literally barnacles everywhere. Just gotta scrape the legs. It's really hard to say where they would have actually took shelter because in here, right here, they'd cop the southwest winds. There's a cave over the other side, only one that's low to the water as well. And that would stop, so who knows, maybe they actually switch sides of the bay depending on how bad the weather was. But it is lovely in here. I mean, you've got plenty of places to shelter. I would have roughed it back in the day. But to what degree? I mean, I like to rough it <laughs> at times, but still doesn't look like a very pleasant place to um, to live for 10 years. 
I don't know how those buggers lived out there. Yeah. That would have been shit house. There's nothing. No good caves. No. Nah. So that one that we looked at didn't actually look that good? No. Nah. Like that one then, like sure you could get by, but to live out there for a decade. Right. Not surprised they flagged down passing boats and robbed them. <laughs> <laughs> they, live, they would have been living so rough if that was the case. No tools. No, I just found a couple of pistols and stuff, just yeah, left them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you do. Nice shoes. 